today we were going through a trend I saw on TikTok where men open up about their past relationships and stories about how women done them wrong. You see on my screen it says, doctor says open up. One time in my life I felt that. And in the bot and in the description they write a whole story about whatever. I'm gonna re read all this and we're gonna you know learn some interesting stories. Let's go and get into it. All right, the first one we'll be reading is called Just Being Real. Ninth grade freshman year, my first ever girlfriend, Indigo Briggs. I remember our first conversation. I didn't bring my glasses, so I had to sit next to her in order to see the board. You asked me for the rest of my notes since you didn't write yours, and I gave them to let you copy them, and you wrote your Snapchat at the bottom of the page. page. My heart lit up that day. I remember us talking for a good month. And homecoming was around the, uh, around, and I made a big plan to ask you at the homecoming football game. I made a nice poster, put your favorite candies on it, bought you your favorite snacks on the side, and a nice white teddy bear. It said it would be sweet if you went to homecoming with me. LOL. I should have known how you treated that poster at the football game, that you weren't for me at all. You just left it there to sit around on the ground from the side. LOL. I spent hours on that poster, but I was dumb, dumb, so I didn't care that much. Next day was homecoming. I thought we were going to be going together. Ella was silly me. You didn't talk to me the entire time and you decided to dance with other people and guys. And at the end, you approached me and regardless of, of you not speaking to me at all, I was still still excited for at least a conversation You told and you told me for a relationship right now. It hurt, but I respected your wishes. Two or three months go by and you pop out of nowhere. And me being a dumb kid, I let you back in. We started dating and it was going well. Well, that's what I thought. We were... We were together for eight to nine months, and I was a good boyfriend. I showed her to cry on, I met your parents, helped me with heavy situations you couldn't get over yourself, getting you gifts, went trick-or-treating together, things I didn't even know I was capable of. As months go by, around our eighth month, I started to hear rumors about you staying after school, walking, walking around with some boy and holding hands. But I was still just a dumb, dumb freshman, happy to have a girlfriend not believing in the lies and trusting you wouldn't do me this way. As the month slowly progressed, every day I would get clowned for even still talking to you. Hell, it got so bad I started eating lunch in the lunchroom. But I still stuck in there and hoped that these horrible things I was hearing wasn't true. Until one day, it was lunch time. I was eating my normal green apple watching Adventure Time on my Hulu and I hear the library door open and the chill good mood quickly faded away. I look up at there, she is crying behind the, her best friend. I look up, pause my video and got and go to hug her and ask her what's wrong. Her best friend told me to sit down and she had something to tell me. I remember her sitting down and asking what's wrong and she kept shaking her head at her best friend. Then her best friend opened her mouth and said, she cheated on you. My heart felt like, like it left my chest for a minute because no way I sat and ignored my closest friends and homeboys telling me about her just for it to be true. Then I asked with, with who and how. And her best friend says the guy's name who she's been cheating around with and says after school in the classroom on the third floor. And tears just ran down my face as I got him and walked out of the library. All right, this one's by Alex. And let's go ahead and read this one and start this off. I was dating someone in sixth through ninth grade, three years. My mom told me I was too young for a girlfriend, but I didn't care because I loved her so much. When I love, I love hard. I love unconditioning when it comes to my partner. Anything that is said outside, I don't, I didn't let it get in the way of the love I had for her. I let her meet my grandmother, my mom, my father, and she got close to my brother. I thought what we had was, was never going to end. We were on and off out of the period for those three years. Very toxic, but in this generation, it's normal, which is sad. It was very unhealthy for my age, for the fact I was 11 to 14, but I didn't care what could break us up. I left town to go visit my family due to the fact it was an emergency. I trusted her with, her with everything I had because who would do anything wrong to a nice boy, boy, boy like me? She told me she would be going out with her friends to the movies and watch the new Black Panther. So me thinking anything can't go wrong at all, I said simple okay. Two weeks go by. I'm just not getting out of his football workouts, ready to text the love of my life to tell her about my day and check up on her. But I open my phone and I see a big paragraph writing. She's sorry about what I'm going to see when I switch my app from iMessage to Snapchat. I didn't know what was going. Oh, so I asked her, and she just kept saying sorry. She didn't answer my phone call when I called, so I'm on Snapchat. I opened a message from a guy I knew in elementary. Worst thing I could ever do. I opened the chat, and I see she's giving the guy head in the movies. 
right on the video it says, that's your bitch, question mark. I felt, th I felt like throwing up, but I didn't know how to feel. I, just, I was just sick to my stomach and ready to give up on everything. I didn't want to play football no anymore. I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to do anything but cry where I was sitting and stare at the phone in disbelief. I wanted to fight the guy, but I had to realize that she was the one that knew I was in the picture. He probably didn't, didn't know, so I took it as she didn't care about me. She didn't have respect for me. She didn't appreciate me or just plainly, she didn't care at all. I confronted her, showed her a video, and all she did was laugh and say, so what after she told me she was sorry? I felt like she was playing in my face and didn't, didn't care how I felt at the time. Her and her friends laughed at me and as I cried on the call. I didn't mention how she cheated, cheated eight times in those three years of us dating, but I kept going back because I didn't want her to leave, leave her as she manipulated me by saying everyone that came in her life left her all the time and she was depressed. I wanted to heal her and maybe marry her someday. But that changed that day. I was fed up with the, the self-harm I was doing to myself because it felt like I was being, felt like all growers were the same. So I started to stay to myself more and, and be very cautious with who I opened up to and never talk to anyone seriously for a good amount of time. She's the reason I have overthink everything that comes to my, comes to my mind and hurt my, my own feelings and tend to shut down when people who mean good intentions try to help. But all I thought was everyone would do the same as she did. No one could take that out of my mind. I have trust issues I overthink. I don't believe anything someone had to say to me. I, I definitely can't let go of the accident. But every day because me? What did I do to deserve something like that? My advice to younger audience is to put your health first and care you're all into. They not they may not think the same of you. Don't let anyone play in your face. If you see anything weird, try to communicate or just fall back. Find your peace before you trying to help find someone else's. No, nah, bro, these are actually sad, bro. It's like I I feel for them because you know I feel like every single person has done has been through something like this, so they all can kind of, kind of relate to this. All right, next one. This one is by Zeke. It was ninth grade COVID season. I found myself drawn to a girl in my class. She was wasn't the most conventionally tra attractive, but something about her captivated me. As days turned into weeks, into influential depended and realized I was falling in love with her. I began. My pursuit determined to win her heart. I bought her flowers, brought her her favorite snacks, and spent countless hours by her side. We went to homecoming together, and in a world of uncertainty, she became my anchor. However, there was a dark cloud overshadowing her life. Rumors circulated about an emotionally abusive household, and it gnawed at my conscience. I couldn't stand by her and watch. I couldn't stand by and watch someone I cared about suffer. So I mustered the courage to intervene and help her escape the toxic environment. Once went by and I continued to shower her with gifts and affection. My feelings for her grew stronger with each passing day. Then one fateful Valentine's Day, I decided to go all out. I bought her a luxurious $350 Prada bag, hoping it would make her smile. But as I handed her the expensive gift at school, real day came crashing down. A friend of hers approached me, a sullen expression on, on her face. She told me something that shattered my world. The night before, the same night I had bought her the Prada bag, she got her back obliterated by someone else a guy she knew for three days. Confusion and heartbreak confused me. As I approached her, my voice trembled, trembling as I asked about what I just heard. To my shock, she burst into laughter and began recounting the details of that night as if I were just a friend she was confiding in. I was devastated. The girl I loved had not only betrayed my trust, but also made a mockery of my feelings. It was at that moment that I felt a darkness creep into my heart. Fear and anger took over. I embarked on a path I wish I had never chosen. I began to manipulate and hurt others, especially women, as a way to shield myself from the pain I felt. My vision of love was tainted, and I found it hard to trust anyone ever again. I had unwittingly begun a villainous arc that would leave a trail of hurt and regret in my wake. Looking back, I wish I had handled things differently. My action and the aftermath of the heartbreak would haunt me for years to come. Love had turned me into something twisted and un unrecognizable. I would have spent a long time trying to mend the damage I had caused. This man's writing is, is beautiful, bro. It's also sad though. You, she's out here telling you the story about her back in and blown out. You were her best friend and you had feelings for her. This this shit relatable, bro. I feel like I've been through this before too. This shit hurt. This were some very sad and, you know, realizing stories that, you know, you can take some a lot of learning experiences from. Also, I'm not the best reader. I'm sorry. I read better when I'm obviously not talking out loud, bro. In my mind, I'm a great reader. But God bless y'all, man. God bless the people I just read. Hope they're doing good in life. And yeah.